Welcome to Hokey Religion, the Star Wars podcast. This is Tyler. This is Michael. And the show. Hokey Religion is an ancient weapon for no match for a good blast here at your side. Showtime! Yeah, I don't know why, but I really want to just sing the Muppets, like the Muppet Show theme song from way back. <laughs> it's time to start the music. Like that whole thing. Like, I don't know to- why. I don't know all the, the words to it. I just want to sing it. What are the, yeah, what's the next dust, line? The dust the lights. Is that what you just said? Yeah. <laughs> is that what they said? I don't know if they're it's dusting. Time, it's, time to, it's time to dust the lights. <laughs> it's time to wake up. Uh, <laughs> what's, yeah, what's I, don't on the is, I don't think any of those are the words. No? I just know it's time to get things started. That's the the extent of my lyrics. Da, 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 I'm up at show tonight. But I'm bum, bum. Yeah. yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> well, that's the big guy later <laughs> that... i don't know what they say anyway all right so that was fun i don't know why that's just really that's how i wanted to start the show is just instead of saying welcome to hokey religion i just wanted to start singing the muppet song for no reason i prepped all week for this recording by watching every star trek movie <laughs> oh great <laughs> so i'm all prepped ready to all talk prep. about star trek we did watch a movie with the holodeck in it Yes, we did. <laughs> Unrelated to Star Trek. Unrelated to Star Wars or Star Trek. Watch uh, Related Jason to X. space. <laughs> Jason X is the worst Friday the 13th movie. Well, yeah, I don't know. Jason Takes Manhattan's pretty bad. but there's Yeah, a, it can't be the worst, but it, it, it's pretty bad. They weren't trying to be serious, I don't think. You they know, seemed to be trying to be funny. You know Bionicles? Yeah. Yeah, those old Lego yeah, yeah. things. His mask at the end looked like a Bionicle mask. Oh, yeah, kind of a little bit. Like it was. Um, but yeah, Jason X is Jason in space, and at one point there's a holodeck uh, summer camp, and he beats uh, two campers inside their sleeping bags, just whacking them together <laughs> inside w- their sleeping bags. They get inside their sleeping bags, and he picks them up by the end and just, <laughs> just whacks slams them it against the tree. tree over and over but and over again. But they're holodeck people, so it's okay. And then on the ground a couple times, and then just kind of tosses it. It's a pretty great Jason yeah. movie. Sure, watch it if you have nothing better to do. I don't understand why, at the end... <laughs> Just talk about Jason, yes. Jason X now? He gets almost, basically, his whole head blown off, right? And then the, yeah, yeah. the nanobots come... Well, they and, blew off an arm, they blew off a leg, and they blew off his head. Right. Yeah. So the, And then the nanobots come at the end, Spoiler and they, they rebuild him. But how do they get... They, they like, <laughs> build a mask for him, and then a whole head behind <laughs> the mask. Yeah, yeah. They, uh, How does that work? <laughs> I don't know why. They, they know work. where the mask starts and where his face. <laughs> I don't know why they had to build the mask ends. back on him. I don't get it. Because you can't have Jason without a mask. So and they like the designed it. Now. It has like a design on the mask. <laughs> no, they had a meeting. They had storyboards. <laughs> it was the whole thing. You, they didn't show that part with like the the render. Why the were his renderings uh, before they decided what to do? And why were his eyes red at the end of the movie? <clears throat> Space eyes. After he got rebuilt, his eyes were red. Uh-huh. Why? Spooky. Like the nanobots decided that Spooky. now he has to have different. Yeah, that was part of the storyboarding process of deciding in the His final new design. character design. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Jason, you've uh, you've been kind of nasty in the past. So we're gonna we're gonna pump you up with <laughs> with metal and red eyes. Is Make that... you relatable again. Yeah. So Star Wars <laughs> is what this podcast is about, and not Jason X. Oh man! Now that we've spoiled the entire movie for you. Oh, yeah, I'm sure a lot of people are upset about that one. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. So, mm. um, this past week, there was a gigantic uh, Rogue One data dump, basically. Um, sort of. One of those well, EU kind of, yeah. uh, character Not insider EU. things. We say that, EW. EU, oh, what did I say? I said EU. E-E-U. Oh. Entertainment Weekly uh, still has, I guess, the rights to all Star Wars uh, announcements. Which is weird. And, yeah, I, I don't know why StarWars.com doesn't. <laughs> announce the things first but i guess maybe ew paid a ton of money for that I anyways guess. they had a whole rogue one special um issue and have been dumping rogue one stuff online information about characters pretty much a, a little blurb on each character characters names um there's been some other follow-up stuff as well since then but that's which has been pretty cool i mean <clears throat> i guess we'll just jump into it they're uh Start with, don't do that one at the end. <laughs> don't do that one at the end? I'm telling you about our notes. <laughs> okay, thank you. Do our notes, the, the, the yeah, that thing, bottom up. 
<laughs> All right, we built notes. We're gonna read them upside down and yes. from the bottom. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna start with the one that I, uh, I I I was interested in the most was actually Mon Mothma. Um, Aha! And uh, Kathleen Kennedy yes. was talking to Entertainment Weekly about it and was saying that you know Mon Mothma has a significantly larger role than she did in Jedi. Which I mean, in Jedi she stood in a room and was like, uh, "Do mm. stuff." Go. Many Bothans died <laughs> to get us this information. Yeah. Um, she said, uh, Kathleen Kennedy said, we actually see quite a bit of her. The Rebel Alliance is in disarray, pretty panicked, up against it, and she is trying to the best she can to provide the leadership in, um, in amongst a wide variety of Rebel soldiers that have a very differing opinion as to what to do. Um, Who wrote that sentence? That was, was Kathleen. That, that was Kathleen. Like, that was a quote oh. of Kathleen okay. speaking. I thought that was something that somebody wrote. Uh, no. Um, so Mothma, I think we mentioned this before, but Mothma is played by Genevieve O'Reilly, who actually played Mon Mothma in Revenge of the Sith yeah. in a scene that got cut. Right. Um, and is in the deleted scenes on the DVD. It w- was it that extra scene, uh, where Bail Organa and a couple other people, um, Padme, they're all meeting in like a, her council chambers or something? I think so. Oh. Uh, well, anyway, oh, it looks like we lost. We were trying to live stream this episode, and it looks like we completely lost it. Yes, let's derail the yep. real thing Sorry. that's gonna come out. <laughs> no one's gonna pay attention to that. Uh, but yeah, it's don't you remember that deleted scene where they were all sitting in her council chambers and they were talking about what eventually becomes the rebellion? Yeah, I've seen it like I only saw it like once in a very long time ago, oh, so I don't okay. remember it. I'm just um, trying to remember if that's the one that Mothma was in or not. I just think it was cool that. You know, when casting the part for Rogue One, uh, they said, you know, that the director um, went and found the actress and brought her back. Basically, nice. like, saw, you know, found who it was and brought her back to play Mothma. She again. seems like a really and good choice for it. She looks just like her. Yeah. Um, so, I thought that was pretty cool. That's my bit on Mon Mothma. Apparently, you had very specific ideas of what characters we were going to talk about. So, why don't you take the next one? Uh, next one. Um, Donnie Chen's character. Chirut Imway. <laughs> Chirut Imway. Um, we had talked about this before. He's not a force user. Um, the little profile here mentioned, but uh, he believes in the force according to this thing and is sort of a space monk. I don't know what that means. Someone who is more, maybe it's more of like a, you know, what's her name? <laughs> Jeez, what's the, uh, what is that? A space monk? No, what the space monk. Oh my gosh, from Force Awakens, Maz. Oh, I couldn't remember her name. Just like Force sensitive. Um, ish. Was she Force sensitive? I think so. She she was kind of a. Well, I mean, I mean, it depends on how how much. The I guess she did have. Canon. Yeah, I guess she did have some kind of connection to the if Force. If the supposed scenes that were shot with her using the Force are. Okay. Any sort of canon, then I would. She did so. have, yeah, she did have some kind of connection. She was written to be able to use the force. She knew that Ray had that vision, so she. Yeah. Okay. Well, I was gonna say someone like Maz, who is kind of a historian of the force, like knows a lot about it and believes it exists. That's what this guy strikes yeah. me as. But Donnie Yen in any movie is gonna be really fun, and it looks like they <clears throat> let him do. All his crazy martial arts junk. Yeah, he's like a battle monk. So that'll be fun. Um, mm-hmm. Mads Mikkelsen plays, does play Jin's father. That yes, was confirmed. confirmed. Um, and he's going to be a scientist whose work is desired by both the rebels and the empire. So some kind of technology was, that's wanted by both sides. I, I was reading what. something that said that he had some kind of um, like doom device or doom machine knowledge. So I'm assuming they're wanting something that he's created or come up with for the for the Death Star. And the rebels want him to keep that away from the Empire, Maybe, I guess. I'm assuming. Okay. Um. So yeah, he does play Jin's father. His name's Galen Urso. Um. And he's going to be shown in flashbacks to Jin's childhood. Okay. Not um. Uh, not you know during the the normal timeline. Uh, and then Mads also mentioned in another interview. Uh, he was asked uh, what iconic characters like are going to come back for this movie. Like, is Carrie Fisher going to show up? Is Mark Hamill going to show up? Any of those people? And he said, yes, some of those, some iconic characters are going to show up, but I can't tell you who. Uh, 
Well, we've, I mean, we heard, or the rumor is that Han Solo was cast so soon so that he could make an appearance in Rogue One. Right. So that's the only one I can think of. Well, that one, and maybe he was talking about Vader, which that leads to... I mean, that's, a, that's the plan. I mean, we've known that for a while, though, haven't we? Uh, well, I was going to say it leads to it finally being confirmed officially that Vader's going to be in Rogue One. It was never official until now. Yeah, I guess that's true. Um, and they confirmed that, you know, for certain, James Earl Jones is doing the voice of Vader. Yes, um, which is awesome. And supposedly that Vader and director uh, Orson Krennic, the the, the guy in Ben Mendel- White, Ben Mendelsohn. Yeah, apparently him and Vader hate each other, uh, much like Kylo Ren and Hux. Yeah, that makes um, sense. Because of Vader's kind of position outside of the military, like he's he's more of the Emperor's right hand man. He's not. Yeah. He doesn't fit within like the military structure of the Empire, whereas yeah. this guy does. Which I'm. I mean, I'm assuming it's more. It's kind of what Tarkin held against Vader for a little well, while. Well, Tarkin right? and Vader, I think, had a mutual respect for you for each other. They didn't. I think they were annoyed by each other because they wanted to be the one in power. Yeah, like the one in control. But I think they at least respected each other for being good at what they do i guess that makes sense whereas kylo ren and hux like hux realizes that kylo ren is just a giant baby mm-hmm. and hux is like i want to do it all uh, hux no. is like that no kylo oh all right no the whiny bitch <laughs> kylo <laughs> who else is whining in star wars <laughs> kylo ren is the coolest character ever like design his design is amazing ben solo is a whiny bitch <laughs> and he makes me so angry that he's such a baby it's a perfect character. Well, but anyway, um, yeah, Vader's coming back for sure. Yeah. We're going to see him, which is pretty sweet. Which probably means that's who's in that, that tank. Remember we were talking about that a couple episodes ago? I, I, I assume some kind of... It's got to be Vader. I mean, it's it's it can't be the Emperor. Back to therapy, I don't know. Yeah. It can't be the Emperor. Getting one of his treatments. And yet the Royal Guards are there, so it's got to be Vader. I would assume... I don't, yeah, I don't, I mean, it, we don't know who's kneeling in front of the tank, but. No, I don't know who. I but. doubt it's Krennic if they hate each other. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, it, and I, I mean, I've read for some of the uh, Entertainment Weekly stuff and some of the articles I've seen, supposedly Vader's role is small in the film. But I know we've also had rumors of there being, you know, battle sequences. Yeah, seeing him fighting. So if, hmm. if his role is small, I hope that the small role that he has is him just like kicking ass and fighting hmm. i wonder if it's after the plans are stolen maybe um like when they're on that beach like planet chasing them like chasing them back basically trying to hunt them yeah down. yeah uh obviously i assume that's when most of the the business picks up i don't know i mean we've we're, we'll mention this a little later on but the movie still is apparently going to be that kind of band of brothers type of movie like it's still going to be a war movie yeah that was um, i'll talk about that in a second but there's one more character so yeah the last one was uh confirmed was or you know expounded upon was for the one that was the most expounded upon what yeah well well, because it was i think it's the biggest deal was forrest whitaker's character Mm mm-hmm which was confirmed to be a character from the fifth season of Clone Wars. Yeah, which is Saw, awesome. Saw Gerrera is his name. Mm-hmm. And I didn't remember this guy because it's kind of buried in Clone Wars. Just one Clone well, just, Wars just, episode. Like, he's just like a one-off episode with this guy. Yeah. He's like a, a you know... He's uh, a freedom fighter on Onderon. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, they have this whole story arc where Anakin and Obi-Wan and Ahsoka... Um, uh, show up on Onderon to help train this kind of freedom fighter band yeah. to try to liberate the planet. Because uh, they had asked, I think, the Jedi Order to come and, and help them out with that, but they refused yeah. and they just sent these three guys. He was, but, if I remember correctly, he was like, his character, he had like cornrows, basically, right? Uh, probably. Like a younger black dude with like cornrows. I don't think he had cornrows. I think he had like braided hair of some sort. I don't think so. He just or, had short hair or like really shaved with a design in it. I remember it being like some kind of designed right thing. But anyway, he was so yeah, that's where he was from, which before I move on, it's just it's cool to see that, to see characters being pulled from other especially a character that's this deep of a cut. 
from just, you know, he was just yeah. a guy in a Clone Wars episode that they thought had a compelling story or whatever reason. Um, but it just shows how all of this is just connected that, now. Yeah, that continuation of tying the universe together. Right. Um, I mean, it's all one story group and it's coming out of, you know, uh, everyone is collaborating on the same thing. It's, I don't know, it's it's really cool. Yeah, and like, um, I saw I saw you found this too, but he was he was mentioned in Bloodline, mm-hmm. actually, which I completely forgot about this happening at all yeah i Um, saw in some article that he was mentioned in bloodline so i went back i had actually highlighted this part in the book because i didn't it looked interesting but mm -hmm. when leia and caster if you've read bloodline leia and caster foe they're they're on this planet um um doing a bunch of stuff walking back to their ship and they start arguing about the merits of the rebellion and how they handled things and caster starts to get upset and starts arguing about how the rebellion's tactics are like terrorist tactics and they're too extreme. And he brings up like the Death Star being destroyed and all like the, a million people were on it and were killed. A lot of which are civilians and officers and stuff. Um, apparently there was a slaughter of a bunch of denizens on a planet called Nalt after the rebels left there. Apparently there was a base there. We haven't heard anything about that. Um, but, um, uh, there was assault on uh, Vivona. Vivona. I've never yeah. heard of that place before. No. And then they mention, or he mentions, and Saul Gerrera's partisans. Yeah. And I looked up that a little bit more, and there were this faction that he started uh, right after the Empire was formed, and right after the, the rebellion was formed, and the Civil War started. Mm-hmm. Um, that as they started doing things and battling the empire, they kind of separated themselves from the rebellion or the rebellion distanced themselves from this group because their tactics were too extreme. Yeah. So I, this, I assume he still had really that freedom fighter, like guerrilla warfare yeah. style that, you know, he so had the, to use right. when, in the clone wars. So this is a guy who I assume at this point has already started that group and the rebellion has already distanced themselves from him. And he's known and the rebellion as being someone super extreme, um, you know, this freedom fighter from Andron who's, you know, is basically a terrorist now and yeah. probably kills a bunch of people constantly. And so I don't know. It'd be interesting to see what he does. I'm assuming if he's like a freedom fighter, guerrilla warfare, kind of almost like black market fighter at this point, like not. Do not they a, just run into him? Do they recruit him? Maybe. I mean, maybe the rebellion uses him because he has connections that they don't have. Maybe. Um, yeah, due to I his don't know. kind of darker, more rough <laughs> um, fighting style and more you know rough. <laughs> I don't know. He seems like he's more not his necessarily. His power level like a, is 9,000. <laughs> he's not like a bounty hunter, but I mean, he's not, you know, trying to. I don't know. I think he's more of just trying to survive through the empire than try to stop the empire to bring something better to happen. Like the no, I think it's is. I think it's the opposite. I think really? he's he's past the rebellion in hatred of the empire. Well, no, I'm and we'll go he hates them, but I don't think it's his hate in his fighting them has nothing to do with trying to bring something better about like the rebellion is trying to do. I think he's trying to do the same thing as the rebellion. He's just going about it in a much worse way, a much more difficult way. Yeah, like he doesn't care about collateral damage and things like that. Instead of just taking away their power, he's just trying to take away them. Yeah, like just kill anyone associated with the Empire. Like that kind of a person. So yeah, I can see that. Yeah, so yeah, maybe he does have connections they don't have. Maybe they need someone like that in order to get into the Death Star. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. I, I, I wonder mean, what. We see We see in like the trailer or the teaser, you know, at one point they have like... Uh, um, yeah, he does have... warn them. There's that warning in the teaser yes. about, um, what does he well, say? Well, that's you hear Darth Vader's breath, like, under his, what he's saying. He says something about, is it, is he talking about when you, when, when they find you, what will you do? Is that what yeah. he says? Yeah. It's something like but that. I'm saying, but I was thinking, we also see, like, Jin wearing, like, um, Imperial garb at one point. Like, she's wearing, like, an Imperial suit. Like, yeah. a commander suit or something. Yeah. I'm, I'm wondering if he, like, helps, like, smuggle them in to, oh, yeah, you know, maybe. Death Star has something to do with that. Um, because obviously they have to get to wherever the plans are. We're right. Not, not probably not. I don't know if they're going to the actual Death Star to get the plans, or if they're just going somewhere else. I, I don't know. Um, probably that beach planet, maybe. It could be. Yeah, the one with the uh, the beach the planet. <laughs> it's just a giant beach. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> There's half of it. The, 
the, there's just a, there's just a ring around the middle of sand, yeah. and then the other two hemispheres are water. So right. there's just this one strip of beach that goes all the way around the planet. Yes. Yeah. Okay. There's just like one sandbar that just circles the planet. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what he's he's speaking from a place of experience, though. It sounds like. Yeah. So. I no, I mean, and he's he's been through a lot. If he's fought all the way through the Clone Wars, you know, until now, right? Um, he's he's kind of been in it. He's not, you know, he knows how rough it gets. Yeah, um, out of all these guys, I wonder if he's the one with the most experience with the Empire. Could be. Is the most experienced? Because I mean, he's actually fought. He's actually fought them. Yeah. Um. Ever most, since the Clone Wars, most of the rebellion probably, you know, as they throw troops at them and they get killed. I'm sure a lot yeah. of them are younger and. Don't yeah. even remember the Clone Wars at this point. Yeah, maybe. Um, so he's, he's well, yeah. Ever he fought ever since the Clone Wars, like he's been in war ever since the Clone Wars. Probably just Fight, he's fighting the Separatists initially, and constantly then, trying to and stop then them. the Empire. Yeah. But yeah, like you <laughs> yeah, said, I think be... it's awesome that they're they're still tying everything together. Yeah, um, right. Just like Bloodline, you know, pulled stuff from all over to tie the universe together more. Right. Um, and the books are doing that, and the movies seem like they may be. You know, they're finally pulling in characters from outside. Right. I think it's cool that, I mean, I, I, I totally, you know, just skipped over that line in Bloodline. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, he, he showed up first in Clone Wars and then he was in Bloodline. They just pulled him, I guess, knowing that what was going to happen I, in yeah, World One. I don't One. remember the name Saw Gerrera's Partisans being used in Clone Wars. That had to have been something that's been made up since No, then. yeah, that was something that he started after the end of the Clone Wars. So... Like we know, we know that Ryan that Ryan Johnson got involved with um, some like he he helped with some ideas for the Bloodline. Um, for Bloodline, yeah. Um, his, I don't know his if... whole his whole thing. You haven't read that. His whole he actually his. It was well, yeah, his he idea came up with the factions, factions, right? Yeah, um, and there were a couple other like story like points that he wanted to include. Yeah, to kind of make sure the universe ties together with what they're doing. Right. I'm wondering if Gareth uh, was involved as well, just knowing that that was that he was that was coming if if because she couldn't have just thrown that in without that have been having been created or been an idea somewhere yeah i don't know maybe he maybe the uh story for rogue one was being written and she needed more examples of i don't know of some stuff they've done yeah terrible things related to the rebels and then that came up i don't know i don't know how it happened that's it's cool that it's all being tied together you know yeah um yeah and speaking of Rogue One, the ever churning waters of the Rogue One reshoots, um, as <laughs> what? we we both we both said they're complete. Like <laughs> all the, the bitching about it's complete crap. I mean, I about the reshoots. Both, yeah, the yeah. Reshoots. We talked about that an episode or two episodes ago, something like we, that. I mean, we talked about it a couple times, I think. But I mean, we don't. I mean, movies go through reshoots. Almost every movie goes through reshoots. Yeah, that's a thing that happens. But people are, you know, I think there's, I still see like, well, panic, it was the, it was articles online about, oh, uh, the reshoots because of the part of the quote, the initial quote that came out was, it was, had, it was poorly worded. Yeah. It had something to do with the tone, uh, the tone of the movie. Mm-hmm. So everybody freaked out like, well, wait, well, what was wrong with the tone of the movie? That was what everyone was freaking out about, which, yeah, I could see that being a little worrisome. Yeah. And I think, I think they, I think that that statement made it seem like the tone of the entire movie was off. Um, but like uh, Kathleen Kennedy had a statement finally on it saying the tone of the movie, which was billed as a band of brothers style combat tale. Right. Um, at last year's celebration event, isn't being altered. There's nothing about the story that's changing with a few things that we're picking up in um, additional photography. I think that's the most important thing to reassure fans that it's the movie we intended to make. Yes. And I saw another thing I was reading where they were saying that there was the tone of some, they were punching up some battle sequences and punching up some, um, some uh, some of the emotional scenes, like some of the like more emotional uh, character oh. uh, scenes. They All were right. punching up some of that to to give it more, I don't know, more oomph, more depth or more, whatever. Yeah, some they were sure. just punching up some more depth to some of the emotional stuff and punching up a few like action sequences, but nothing that like affects the overall story. Right. They didn't like cut a chunk of the, you know, a chunk of the uh, script and then have to rewrite it. Though I did, I did see something that uh, I think this is still just a rumor that they did bring in a writer um, to help rewrite some dialogue for some of those emotional scenes, hmm, um, interesting. And some other stuff. Um, but just for those, just for those, you know, just just some dialogue. Rewrites. Who wrote? 
Rogue One? Was it Gary Whitta? Uh, we've been over this before, and I completely forget. As it was Gary Whitta. always do. It was Gary Whitta, wasn't it? I think so. Because he helped with... Yeah, it was Gary Whitta and... Yeah, Gary Whitta. And he came over to Rebel Season 3 and helped write some stuff for that. Okay. I don't know what yet, but that's what it's been talked about. Because like we were talking about before, there's going to be this, this crossover... Mm-hmm. As the two properties, like, you know, merge, yeah. like, in in the timeline, you know, Rebel Season 3 is coming into the area where Rogue One is. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, Gary sense. Weta came in and, and helped write some of those episodes. Because we'll probably see some characters. Maybe Saw will show up in Rebels. I don't know. Uh, that could be. That'd actually be pretty cool if he came, if he showed up in that before Yeah. Um, showing up in Rogue One. Um, maybe some other characters. Who knows? But uh, yeah, I wonder. Uh, I wonder why they had to bring somebody else in. Just to rewrite. It was like just to rewrite some like dialogue. Mm-hmm. Is what this is what I what I was reading it was just you know just dialogue. Maybe Gary's not good at people speaking. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Not everybody's perfect. Um. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. So that was that was the mo- that was the bulk of the it's making it better. Point. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, who cares? Like I said, almost every single movie that is made goes through reshoots yeah. to you know fix things that oh that to do exactly this that to do show, punch up that didn't play like we thought it would you know that mm-hmm. that emotional sequence was fell flat we need to you know reshoot it and make right. some changes that happens with almost everything and if it didn't most movies would suck so it's I, it's not a reason to worry I don't understand why people are still talking about it so Kathleen finally put the put the foot down it's like it's fine. <laughs> Trust me, <laughs> nothing is happening. <laughs> We're all fine here. Yeah, only what a hundred something days left until Rogue One. Yeah, something like that. Because it's uh, December, let's see, what Christmas are we times. in? Um, so we got one, two, <laughs> <laughs> three, four, five. Uh, 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 okay, uh, start, start uh, over. Start over. Five months. Right, yeah, six that's... months. Six months. It's not yeah. 100 days. Six months. Three months would be 90 days. <sighs> I do the math here. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's 180 days. It's about 180 days. Life A math, little the less. podcast. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> carry, the, carry the one. Um, divide it by. And then, um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Round, round to the Seven. corners. Eight, nine, ten. <laughs> uh, eleven. <laughs> Just like NPR math. <laughs> Twelve. <laughs> Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, <laughs> seventeen. It's like if if, if eighteen NPR bought Sesame Street. <laughs> Nineteen twenty twenty one. Radio show. This is this 22, is it. Twenty five. <laughs> All right, I can't take it anymore. Twenty eight. No. Forty. <laughs> 33 I'm stuck Okay, good Please <laughs> <laughs> The counting It's deafening Oh, I'm out of Mexican beer Oh no um, Keep talking <laughs> I'm trying Go back into the cave and get the beer I gotta get the beer I'll be right back Alright Michael's um, going into the cave to get the beer I found the beer Alright, he's he's found the beer How do I open it? He's, he's stupid and cannot open the beer He's he's biting Hold at on. it. He's oh he's he's losing fingernails. Ah! Uh, oh, there goes his whole finger. That was his metal hand <laughs> hitting the table. All right, uh, lead me back with your voice. Um, if we're really quiet, maybe he won't come back. I can't hear you. So far, so so good. Lead me back. Um, I'm stuck. Uh, maybe we should. Maybe this could be this beer is since terrible. this is gonna be posted to the internet, uh, I might be fra- um, I might be charged with murder or manslaughter. Oh, okay. Oh, never, um, not, nothing was happening. I was yelling. Did you not hear me? No, that I didn't was, hear you. It was so loud. I was stuck in a cave. I tried. I found beer. I tried really hard to, to uh, yell. Hold on. I got this cables. Why are you yanking all of the cables <laughs> off the table. I gotta put the cables back. Don't Hold take on. all the cables into the cave with you. Leave uh, the cables here. Go I to gotta the cave. Put it and come back. back. Oh, well, I tried to. Save I was your in life. the cave. Did you know? I think I think that I, I couldn't knew that. hear you. <laughs> yeah, 
That's that's good. <laughs> I'm glad you made it back safe. Oh, I got the beer. Okay, that's good. <laughs> the crappy Mexican beer that we keep in the cave. <sighs> All right. Thanks for thanks for finding. See what's next. <laughs> Something else that happened that I didn't find until today was um, there was an excerpt for um, Aftermath uh, Life Debt that came out. Oh, I didn't see that. I'm not going to read it because it's super long, but it was posted by Mashable, and I will tweet it out right now, live on the air. Ah! Uh, we're not live. This is recorded. And but according post- to what's in front of me... This goes through post-processing, and then, part then of- it's posted a week later, so <laughs> no one's seeing this live on the air. Uh, according to what's in front of me, uh, Leia has more force sensitivity Yeah, it's just building stuff. in some more of the, her being force sensitive, and you know, obviously we saw some in Bloodline. Um, but this is a little, uh, earlier on, obviously than bloodline. Um, Oh, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking cause in bloodline, she's talking about Ben being off with Luke. And yeah, yeah. That's, that's, wait, that's, is this that's a after, flashback that's after the fact. So this yeah, is yeah. aftermath, which is still in right. the aftermath of the empire getting destroyed. Yeah. I'm getting books confused. Um, and for those that aren't in the know, it's called aftermath life debt, uh, because, um, Leia actually hires the group of people that we know from the first aftermath book to go and save Han and Chewie who have been like captured or put into some kind of slave camp or something while fighting for Kashyyyk's freedom. Hmm. Um, so they are more involved. Some main characters are more involved this time. Okay. Um, but basically the excerpt is just going through her talking about being worried about Han and Chewie and whatever. And then I think at this point she knows she's pregnant, but like with her force sensitivity, she actually like realizes that the baby she's pregnant with is a boy hmm. and then she starts having like dark like uh mm. dark side thoughts as far as um like while she's thinking about him and she's like she's um you know she's already well aware of the bump and tumble of the little person she carries and she knows about like, all the other stuff that goes with pregnancy and she says <laughs> but then the feeling goes beyond that how does something. pregnancy work tyler um there's there's a lot of juice okay um so she's saying she feels there's something <laughs> there's something separate from her. It isn't a phys- physical feeling. And then she's like, wait, it's a boy. And then, you know, she's like, <gasps> and starts to laugh and cry and whatever because she's happy because she knows she's having a boy now because of the force. But then there's like this black edging at um like of the dark side that starts to encircle her, her while she's like having this feeling of her son. And um, hmm. there's like this growing fear, like um, fear of having a child in an unstable galaxy, fear of whether or not Han is alive or if Luke's alive too. Or will the child grow up with a father, an uncle, a mentor? What is her legacy? Her legacy, and what will her boy's legacy be? So she just starts to like freak out about having a child and wow. like worried about him uh, with like this dark side, like dark side thoughts coming into her mind. Huh. Um, so it's it's cool that she's. I mean, they're still so showing she does have force sensitivity still. Mm-hmm. Um, and supposedly, I don't know if it's you know still for certain or not. It's just a rumor that she's gonna you know like we talked about last time have supposedly some force use in episode eight okay yeah um saving herself during a battle sequence something like that interesting yeah so um that's cool that yeah they're starting to build on that it seems mm-hmm. like and the book comes out really soon it's uh july 12th um oh really oh that's right because it was yep. delayed um yeah, a both, month both or two right bloodline and um aftermath got bumped like a month from the original release date yeah so it's been about a month since bloodline came out Hmm. Um, or I think something like that, a couple months, yeah. and now Aftermath is finally going to come out. Sweet. And I don't know when the next books after. Can't that. wait to not read it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you still finish? Not no, finish the first one. Still haven't finished it. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, probably not going to. <laughs> the same characters in this book, so you probably should finish the first yeah, one. Yeah, there's there's the, the there's the the boy. Uh, there's Admiral Akbar. <laughs> there's yep, the main character. He's the boy's mother. Uh, there's the Star War. Yep. He's in it. Um, yes. uh, Master Star Wars. Master Star Wars in it. Um, there's uh, there's a uh, 3PO. There's He's the, the one in the, the gay guy. He's, yeah, there's him. Mm-hmm. Mr. Bones. Uh, yep. Always Mr. Bones. Yep. There's the skeleton, Mr. Bones. <laughs> yep. Who is who is puppeted by? <laughs> by C-3PO. <laughs> yes. Mr. Um, Bones is C-3PO in disguise. Yes. Uh, Spoiler alert. And then there's the trash can. <laughs> it's just a trash can they refer to. <laughs> Timmons just like super crazy and just talking to it. Like she has a little waste basket he carries around with him and talks to it. Yeah, so I don't need to read it, apparently. 
because I've already got. I know what. No, you've got it all. That's yep. All the characters. I think I've told you everything that happens in the book about three times now. So hopefully you have a, <laughs> at least a general understanding of of how the story ends. I know it's about Star Wars. Uh, the Star Wars. <laughs> I think the war at this point was over, so it's just about Star. They're still doing stuff. They're still fighting. It's like Star Battles. It's like Star Punching. Star, star punching? Bar Fights. No, it's just Star Battles. It's um, okay. Star Interactions. <laughs> star Battles. Starker Fluffles. Star Battles. <laughs> With um, ham slurpo <laughs> <laughs> ham slurpo <laughs> yes. that sounds like a name of a character in a star wars porno <laughs> ham slurpo ham slurpo hey, and um, uh, i'm ham slurpo <laughs> i need you to save me from these restraints <laughs> Ham Slurpo and Chimbraca. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> That's Star Battles. <laughs> okay. The off brand Star Wars <laughs> reproduction that we will be putting on at the local theater this summer. Watch out, Ham Slurpo. Here comes. <laughs> there comes the. The. The flyer. <laughs> You you lost all. No, I think you lost consciousness for a minute there. I blacked out a little bit. <laughs> oh man, I kind of it jumped in time. I looked at my watch and it was five seconds later. <laughs> yes, the rest of us had to live through that. Thank you. What did I say? Uh, we'll go back to the tape later. Mm-hmm. So, um, another big thing that I found recently in the a, notes <laughs> that i put in the notes that i found there's an episode eight rumor another one that seems like it could be possible and it seems like it's also tying in i think half of it's possible i don't know if, we'll see but if it's true or if any part of it's true it's still tying in some other stuff that's been created in star wars canon that's not from movies like from clone wars um and i'll i'll get into it i'm actually going to read it it's not that crazy long but i wanted to read it so this is according to Stormtrooper Larry, you know, <laughs> your, your, your source oh, for trustful yeah. knowledge, Stormtrooper Larry. That guy. Yeah. Uh, he, he, this was posted on comicbookmovie.com. Um, so. Comicbookmovie.com. You don't know that website? That's, that's very specific. <laughs> yeah, movie. Comic book movie. Comicbookmovie.com. Yeah. So supposedly, here's the supposed thing that happens in the movie is there's a scene with Luke. Uh, Luke tells Rey that the Jedi Council became arrogant and that they were hiding in a secret. They were hiding a secret, which led to their demise. The old Jedi Master takes Rey's hand and shows her a glimpse into the past. They see two children playing near a tree on an alien planet. The boy notices that he had greater strength and intuition when he was closer to this tree. The girl noticed that the tree also made her brother increasingly angry. One day, an argument breaks out in between the children and the boy kills the girl. The boy touches Ooh. the tree and is transformed. He kills his parents and leaves the planet. Meanwhile, the girl is revealed. Whoa, to be alive. that's a lot that happens. <laughs> <laughs> he kills his parents and leaves. Um, and <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, the girl is revealed to be alive, transformed by the tree as well, using her power to start the first Jedi Order. The girl explains how the Force can be used for both good and evil. She tells her followers that one day she would return as either a boy or a girl, and that they should train this child. Luke tells Rey that the Jedi Order had been searching for the one, uh, the reincarnation of the original founder of the Jedi, for a millennia. And then they found Anakin Skywalker and thought that he would bring balance to the Force. The Jedi were deceived, and the Clone Wars were the result. It also shows Rey's parents, and Luke is not the father. Luke is not the father! Uh, Luke tells her how she was identified as strong with the Force, and how she was supposed to begin her training, but never reached her destination for an unknown reason. In the scene, Luke gives Rey a choice, and she has till sunset to make it. Hmm. So, screenshots, or not screenshots, um, pictures we have seen of sets. There is a tree. If you have seen it on the island where they are, and they are, you know, on Luke's hermit island. Right. There's that big giant tree stump thing. Right. Um, yes. So and there also. There is a tree. <laughs> so there is a tree, a big old looking tree stump thing. Okay. So that ties into this. Um, yeah. My first thought with this boy and this girl was the boy and girl, like the, the right dark from the Clone side, Wars. the dark side, light side, son, like son and daughter. Yeah. Um, in Clone Wars, on that weird Force planet. Right. Um, it was, was like the first. archetypes of the Force. Yeah. There's like the father, and there was a son, and the daughter who was like good and you know light and dark. Yeah. And the son killed the father. 
Right. And then he subsequently killed the girl, didn't didn't he? Um, she yeah, she died, but then was like reincarnated or yes. something. Which the rumor is as well with rebels that her reincarnation did something with Ahsoka's death as well. That she was involved with that. Um, like she shows up at Ahsoka's. No, there's um death. There's like. There's this like weird like owl creature thing, like little fluffy creature thing that is the exact same color scheme of the light side force girl. Okay. Um, and is in a lot of scenes with Ahsoka in like that last episode, and supposedly is also there like when Ahsoka supposedly dies. In the last episode of the season two finale. Yeah, with Ahsoka's whole supposed like you know her ambiguous if she's dead or not. I didn't see that at all. There um, was an owl flying around. It was, it was not a. It was a space <laughs> owl. It was a little, little fluffy. Boobopper. Is it like the worm in Adventure Time? He just shows up at random <laughs> a little tiny parts. worm. Yeah, a little bench worm. Or the s- snail. Is it the worm or the snail? There's a little worm. Yes, but there's also a lot of things in Adventure <laughs> Time that are just around. Uh, yeah. And then I was saying too. I put in the notes here that at the end of the Shattered Empire comic series, mm. the main girl. Which ends up being, it's revealed to be Poe's mom. Yeah. Um, Luke uh, grabs her and they both fly off to this planet, uh, some imperial base, to steal the remains of a tree Mm. that allegedly grew at the heart of the Jedi Temple on Coruscant. Yeah. Um, And this was a a very, you know, he says it in the book, it's a very fragile tree. It's very connected to the Force somehow. Mm. Um, and then he ends up giving it to Sh- uh, Shanna or whatever her name is. Shara. Shara. Shara Bay. Shara Bay. Uh, and her and Poe's dad planted on some planet after they get married. Okay. Um, but anyway, that, you know, I mean, maybe, I mean, maybe, maybe that was that the tree. same tree in the story. It could be that tree that they're talking about. If it was the heart of the Jedi Temple, it was obviously very important to the Force. Could be. So, maybe. so here's that. So it's kind of that so same. That's, it's that same theory we keep hearing, where there's a chosen one who is supposedly yeah. a reincarnation. And this is this is not the first time this has come up. This yeah, is, there's been multiple rumors of this being the case for Episode Eight. Is right. that there is a reincarnation of a chosen one, or some, you know, some people thought it was like the reincarnation of of Anakin or somebody that we we know. I don't think that's the case. Yeah. Um. But there's you know there's this continuing seems to be continuing theory that there is a chosen one who is being reincarnated. I don't or, know. Or I don't know what force, I think about you know, that. Like, even, like their force is being reincarnated in someone. I don't think that person is reincarnating. Right. But maybe just like their power is going towards a chosen one. It's their spirit or their essence or something. Yeah. Sure. And supposedly, um, I know I've, I don't think this was, I forgot to put it in the notes, but um, supposedly there's some stuff with, uh, with a uh, Yoda force ghost with uh, Luke and Ray as well. Okay. Um, That's fine. Yeah. The whole reincarnation thing, I don't know. I don't know. Because the whole, I mean, the entirety of Star Wars up to this point has been focused around Anakin being the chosen one. Like we thought he was the chosen one and it screwed everything up though. Well, that's the thing. Maybe he was, yeah, maybe, maybe the prophecy, the prophecy was misinterpreted. Well, yeah, and then they thought that Luke was. The, I mean, then they, you know, then Yoda but thought Anakin that Luke was, the was a one. very significant, like, piece of the Force. Yeah, I mean, the whole thing with his Metachlorian count and and him um, being the one to take down the Jedi Order. Basically, he was a very significant person. Yeah, I mean, maybe we find out that Anakin was not the reincarnation of, but maybe he he was the boy from the story. Maybe the boy power went to Anakin. It just seems to me for one movie to kind of shift the focus of all of Star Wars away from Anakin. Well, we have to we have to shift focus to something though. Anakin's not around anymore. She, uh, she But to do this, I'm to saying be a new chosen one to save the to save the, to save us all. Um I Yeah, mean, I think that's just the way Star know. Wars goes. There's always a chosen one. It just seems to... so crazy. Like that's a lot to digest for I don't know. It is. And we've never heard I'm not saying that they can't take the story and evolve it, which is this was that's kind of what this is doing, but mm-hmm. it just seems too wild. Well, I mean, if they they've been pulling from other 
media and obviously clone wars is canon and rebels is canon and there's there's been i mean there's been that you know that like we talked about that planet with the weird force people was the brother and the sister and the father and they were like the you know archetypes of the force right. so there's that is canon and that is something that exists in the in the star wars canon now um if you think about the star wars movies the trilogy movies They've all been based in, I mean, okay, so there's the Force. The Force is crazy. The Force is magic, basically. But everything else that happens in the movies is more science-based. There's, it's, it's practical. There could, you know, it's, for a sci-fi movie, there's not a lot of, whoa, crazy stuff. There's aliens, there's spaceships, there's people, and they use weapons and they fight. And there's not, other yeah, than, the, more mag- of, other than okay. the magic of the Force, yeah. there's not a lot of sci, there's not a lot of fantasy to the science fiction. Okay, yeah. But in uh, in our other media that has been happening, there has been more of that sci-fi fantasy having, you know, the Force archetypes and having more more stuff with the Force. The Force has been more of a thing now. Um, but in our, in our movies, yeah, there hasn't been. Yeah. So I do think it will be odd because I think at some point that has to be put into the movies. There has to be that fantasy of the Force actually realized and not just the Force is here and it's everywhere and we use it and the Force is cool. Well, yeah, That's there has to be about. more backstory. Yeah, sure. So... I mean, I think it is going to be weird, and it is going to happen. There is going to be finally more force weirdness that we haven't seen in a movie format. Obviously, it's it's in a cartoon um, series or a comic book. It's more relatable because it's a cartoon series or a comic book, and you're like, oh, force and crazy archetypes of the force and a weird force planet, and there's nothing here makes sense, and they yeah. go and they leave, and everyone's empowered by the force, whatever. Yeah. But I think at some point, some of that weirdness is going to start creeping into the movies. I just think it's incredibly risky to start explaining. It is, but I think it has all to happen. of that. In a and the one of the main movies, though, I don't. Where know. else is that going to happen? I think and, at some and, point it has to be like. I mean, this is the force. This is what's happened. This is, you know, these are the, there are these people. There is this power, and this power is a weird thing, and it and it flows, and it reincarnates, and it creates, and it destroys, and at some point that's going to be in a trilogy main feature film okay sure yeah so let's just assume that that's the case and it's gonna do that like this thing it is crazy but i don't I, it's so crazy <laughs> it is crazy but i i can see something to that extent happening and taking place and being explained like i said there's been so many other formats of star wars media where there's been these crazy oh it's the force and stuff reincarnates and there's force ghosts and there's they go into these caves to get kyber crystals and they have these crazy visions and like force acid (laughs) trips to get their lightsaber crystal but none of that has been in a movie yet with real people and real stuff and the real practical star wars universe that we see and can relate to right but at some point that weirdness is going to have to creep in there's going to be weird acid force like force acid trips with finding a kyber crystal i think at some point there's going to be that weird the force is messed up and it does stuff to you and it affects you and we're actually finally going to show it instead of just talking about how oh it's powerful and then 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 you use it and i guess it's just the the explaining that ray is a reincarnated uh I don't know, origin of the force. I don't think that has to necessarily happen. (laughs) Or origin of the light side. I don't think she has to be a reincarnation or that craziness has to happen. But I think at some point there is going to be a weird explanation of the force or a weird force trip. I mean, she had her vision. She had that weird vision, um, you know, with voices and things. And that that was was a little more akin to the visions and things that happened in like... An empire. Well, even that, but even like... um, that was closer to when they were getting their Kyber crystals in the Clone Wars. Oh, sure. Right. Um, so I, I, th- I think at some point it has to head that direction into yeah. th- the Force is a weird thing, and we're going to have to show how it does weird stuff and not just talk about it, but we're going to have to show that weird things happen and the Force is an actual thing and we're not just talking about it. Sure. You know, people do have the power to do Force items, but, you know, do Force things. They can push and they can throw and they can, mm-hmm. you know, destroy your mind. But I think at some point there's going to be like, it's super messed up what has happened with the force and its origin or how yeah, just Jedi explaining more of the origin of it. Yeah. That's, that's fine. It's going to get weird though at some point. And I think it's going to be a hard pill to swallow and seeing it in a film because like I said, the, the trilogy movies have been so, so practical. So like, maybe it's so weird because it's such a reset of all the canon that we've absorbed up to this point. Yeah, And that's why it's like I said, I mean the, the star Wars movies have been a, a space Western 
you know, a space, like, you know, they have guns and they have lightsabers and they have weapons and most of the fighting is done with weapons. Um, there's a little bit of force use here and there, but most everything is a practical, like, okay, we, we accept that you can build spaceships, you can have a giant death machine, you can yeah. turn a planet into a death star yeah, and you can shoot lasers, all that stuff. You can build a death star. And, yeah. you know, we get that you can throw people and whatever, <laughs> but everything is mostly practical and acceptable and not weird. Yeah. So when it does get weird, it's going to be weird. Like, it's not going to be like, this is, we're not used to this. This is a new Star Wars and this is the Star Wars that we've seen. In I would think it would be the other media. way. It not like when it, when it's time to get weird, you don't go like full pendulum don't go, swing. Don't go to, full weird. Yeah. <laughs> you just, you, your version of weird is a little more relatable than, than if, if, if it had started out as this crazy fantasy based thing. But I think that's what they're trying to build up with. You know, Maybe Clone Wars and Rebels and like weird stuff happens and the force is messed up and there is reincarnation and there is like these weird Maybe. force people. Rebels hasn't really touched on that very much. Not too much. Clone um, Wars had that, you know, some exploratory episodes like that one. <laughs> <laughs> I had exploratory episodes. We don't need to know about those right now. Okay. I'll show you later in the cave. But I mean... Well, that cave. <laughs> that's, a, that's an exploration that's a big all cave. on its own. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. This, this is a theory. It, it is, is theory from someone named Stormtrooper Larry. <laughs> Stormtrooper Larry is, happens to be my so, best friend. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, take it with a grain of salt. I think, yeah, you're right that now that we've kind of had this rumor come in a couple different ways that maybe there's some truth to it. I mean, I mean, again, you know, take we're, it with a grain of salt. And we talk about these rumors because there is some truth in rumors, but it's also our job is to speculate about it as fans, too. Well, so, yes, I will say we are definitely going to get... I mean, this is a Luke. We're, we're showing up, seeing a Luke who has lost the last, I don't know, 10 years or whatever to just going off on his vision quest. So we're going to get a Luke we're going to get an explanation of a lot of the origins of the force, what he's been up to. <laughs> what if we get back to it and he's like, I've, I've found nothing. There's nothing <laughs> out here. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> he's just still like, just can we go now? <laughs> yeah. I've <laughs> learned nothing. <laughs> oh, he's just no. like a broken, he's just oh, like no. completely broken his mind. He just like snapped. Oh no, Luke, no. She's like no. holding up the lightsaber and just slowly pulls it back in <laughs> and just turns around and walks away. Back starts backing up slowly <laughs> and slowly turns and just bolts down the stairs. <laughs> Joey! Start the ship! <laughs> yeah, exactly. Start the ship! And he's blowing, like, you know, blow darts and throwing spears at her. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to remember. I was like, that's not from Star Wars, but... Han no. Solo said that. <laughs> it was, that was that was Indiana Jones. <laughs> there you go. Chuck! Now you're with start me. Start the plane! <laughs> now you're with me. Yeah. Okay. I got you. Um No, but yeah, like you said, he's gonna I mean he's a he's a learned We're gonna get that explanation. He's a learned Luke. He's yeah. he's, he's, he's the old Jedi master he's, Luke now. He's, yeah, he's got that knowledge and you can see it in his eyes that he's just like stuff's messed up. He's like, grown up. <laughs> there's been a lot of stuff that's happened with the force. Yeah before and now and everything is is it worth it to continue on with dealing with all this right um i'm what's... trying to do hand farts sudden hand farts into the mic oh, i can't do it <sighs> oh, <sighs> anyway we're interrupting that serious discussion <laughs> with hand farts no but i mean that's my job. you know the rumors uh take it with a grain of salt but that just sparked my my thinking of you know of all the weird force stuff we have gotten in every other piece of media except for the movies and at some point, the yeah, weird force right. stuff gonna, is going to be seen, and it's going. I just to, don't think it's going to be this weird. It may not, <laughs> you know, it may not just jump into the deep end with, "All right, force is weird. Here you go. Let's watch all of the craziness and get rid of half of our fans by destroying." The reason I say that, way imagine you're, yeah, imagine some stupid idiot at work or whatever goes okay. and sees this Star Wars movie. Oh yeah, and then sees this. Like, what is he going to think about Star Wars after that? Like, it's just going to... It would it would break casual fans. 
Yes. Out of Star Wars. I agree yeah. with that. So uh, that's why I don't think... But at some point, this is Star Wars and this is the universe where the other things that are weird with the Force have taken place. I expect there to be some of this weirdness to happen in the movies at some yes, point. Yes, I think it, that that's what I'm saying. I think we're going to get that explanation. We're going to get a little bit of weirdness. I just don't think it's going to be this No, level. I don't think it'll go with the 0 to 60. I do like, think it will be weird. And to 0 actually... to 60 is cutting back... To a flashback of a boy and a girl that are supposed to be the archetypes of the Force, <laughs> like that's a little. It could weird. be. I mean, it depends on how. I mean, they could they could pull it off. I think. I keep imagining Actually. like Smeagol and the other one. <laughs> like, Smeagol and Gollum. Yeah, like no Smeagol and the other Hobbit. What was the other uh, Hobbit's name that Daigle, you killed? Daigle. Daigle. Yeah, that's right. Daigle. Daigle. Yeah. However you pronounce it. Yeah. Lieutenant Dangle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Lieutenant Dangle. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, I keep imagining that scene as this. That's what this like is. In the boat fishing. Yeah, when it's all glossed over, and he <laughs> finds the ring and, <laughs> and chokes the guy with dirt on his fingers. Yeah, I just remember that scene. It's a good scene. Oh boy, it's a great. Those are great <laughs> movies. Um, yeah, I just I, <clears throat> I keep saying it's going to get weird at some point, and it, I I'm excited, and also it's going to, but it's also going to be very odd to finally see it in a real sure live action format. Because, yeah. like you said, it, I think that explanation will happen, and I think it has to happen. I think this movie is going to be so interesting, Episode mm-hmm. 8, because of how formulaic Episode 7 was, uh, and was, how much it, it was, mirrored it a, a new hope. hope. Yeah, Like this, I, it, I think... It to be. I, I mean, yeah. So, now that we've got that out of the way, I think this one is going to be super interesting, because it's going to be different. Yeah. Here's the new Star Wars. Yeah. We're going to finally explain stuff. Things are happening. We're going to have new things that we've never seen before in yeah. a Star Wars movie. This is the universe. There. This is the stuff that George Newt Lucas never actually went into yeah. with the Force that every other author... Did you and... say George Newt Lucas? <laughs> Did that just slip out? Uh, was, have, you been, um, have you been thinking about that lately? Uh, Tyler? Don't That's... look at my Google history. Um, <laughs> I've no, seen, I've seen the pictures. George Lucas never went into, you know, all these writers... I've seen your history. <laughs> all these writers and, you know, all these TV shows and... Comic books and books have gotten into all this more, so much more. We can finally do that now with the with the movies. Right. I'm excited that's going to happen, but it is yeah. going to be odd to see it happen. Yeah, true. Um, so we'll see how hard of a pill it is to swallow when it does happen, and if they can pull it off tastefully. But Ryan Johnson is, a, is an amazing writer. Yeah. Um, and if you know he's helped at all with writing this movie, I think it's going to be fun. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be pretty sweet. Yep. All right. Uh, that's all I've got. Got anything else? Um, more hand farts? Never, never more hand farts. Do no. the outro and I'll do the hand farts. Okay, man. Deal? <laughs> All right. So you guys can hit us up at our email address at hokey po- uh, hokey religion pod at gmail.com. You can find us on Twitter at hokey underscore religion. Uh, you can find us on YouTube. Look up hokey religion. Um, where else can they find us? Michael? I don't think we have anything else. Is that all the places? YouTube, Facebook. Oh, we have a Facebook page now. If you look up Hokey Religion, the Star Wars podcast on Facebook, there is a page. Uh, Join in. Uh, All the episodes will go up there automatically as well as when they go up everywhere else. So if you're into listening to podcasts on Facebook instead of anywhere else, (laughs) that's whatever. So be it. If you're a freaking weirdo and you use Facebook. Make poor choices, but those are your choices to make. YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, email, the podcast. Sidewalk. Sidewalk. Yeah. Sidewalk. You can find us on Sidewalk. Art. Yes. (laughs) You can find us in grocery stores sometimes um, when we need cereal. And you can find us in the bathroom sometimes in those grocery stores. And you can you find, find us at our homes. Why are you in our homes? Get out of my home right now. Who are you? How did you get in here? Where'd you get that key? Who gave you that key? I didn't. Oh, you're a fan. Come on, get snuggle up. No. No. No, no that's no. not acceptable. <laughs> That's how we think. I don't care. Okay. I don't care who you are. <laughs> uh, no snuggling. <laughs> yes. Full stop. All right. Thanks for listening to Hokey Religion. This is Tyler. This is Michael. Bye. Hokey Religion is amazing. What if I want to snuggle up to you? Mm-mm. <laughs> that was that was very suggestive. Mm-mm. <laughs>